Hello, welcome to my talk. Uh, my name is Sean Pinckney, and we're going to talk about a multivariate synthetic control to estimate completely missing data. Um, I work at Comscore. I'm a senior director of data science, and this work was done in collaboration with Gaurav Shahani and Tyler Morrison. So the idea here, and you'll see, um, I have a little graphic at the very beginning um, that we have a set of donors, so represented by these black triangles, and we want to estimate the missing um, triangle here. So, there, it's, it's done. Um, really, um, that's, that's all there is to it. <laughs> um, talk's over. Now, okay, what is Comscore? So Comscore is a marketing company. We have a bunch of data from a lot of different assets, which include desktop, television, mobile, um, there are tags on many different websites where we get information about number of, of visitors. Um, but really, um, the core, I guess the core mission of Comscore is to become the trusted currency for planning, transacting, and evaluating media across um, all of these different platforms. So for a bunch of different media measurement. Um, so audience analytics, campaign um, measurement, campaign performance, um, advanced audiences, all the different things across all these different platforms. So the specific business problem that, we're, um, that was solved with this model is that we have a bunch of information regarding visitation to, to websites on age and gender groups on a bunch of different countries. Um, so with desktop, so we have full information on desktop and we're missing information for some countries, in this case, Latin American countries on mobile, but we still have information from all the other countries. So can, can we utilize all the information here contained in black basically to estimate this information, which is missing. So what we have, um, so this is the model. Um, this is the model output. Um, this is an example of what we'd have at least for mobile. So we have a set of donor countries um, where you could see all of these countries here in gray. And then we have a set of countries up here, um, which are Brazil. And so we have reported and estimated. And so we actually held out Brazil in this case, even though we have, we actually have information for Brazil um, for this website, age gender group. Um, and then here is the model estimate. So the model estimate is the lighter orange and the darker um, orange is the, oh, sorry, the lighter one is, is the reported, the one that we had that we held out and the darker orange is, is the estimated one. So what, what do the data look like? So in this case, what we have is we have K missing countries or K missing mobile information and we have J minus K complete. So we have desktop information for all, all J countries and we're missing K for mobile, we're missing mobile for K of the countries. Um, so before, um, before the stand model, there is a bunch of data prep. I don't wanna to get too much into it um, so we can focus more on the stand model. But prior to this, you might have questions about, you know, once you're like really digging deep into this, um, you may notice that, hey, what happens? How do you estimate the mean? How do you get, how do you make sure that that mean is there? So we actually first um, predict a ratio. We're actually using um, random forest or some ensemble model to predict this estimate of mobile over desktop plus total in internet for the known countries. Um, and then we can derive an estimate of the standard error, which I actually have um, in the appendix of this, which you can look at um, on your own time. And then we do have some missing uh, single data points. So we make sure that we estimate those using a common filter estimate. And then we're z-score standardizing the time series, which are then put into the stand model. So we have a latent factor model here um, for the synthetic control. Um, so if you don't know much about synthetic control, um, there are a few different ways. There are tons of papers that have been written about it, um, especially recently in the last, I would say, three to five years. Um, what we're doing is we're gonna use a latent factor model. This allows us to focus more on estimating and less on trying to figure out like the seasonality and like the idiosyncratic effects of the countries. So we're just hoping that the factors themselves are gonna take care of those. Um, so we have L latent factors. 
Um, and then this is our factor matrix. This is our factor transformation, the coefficients on it. And then we're going to have a set of T monthly effects um, and K country fixed effects. Um, you can read this paper. It's similar to there. Um, we're going to say that desktop and mobile, um, we actually are going to be distributed as a multivariate normal for the J countries. And there's a correlation across those J. So we're going to have two, uh, two latent factor models in this case. Um, so this is, this is an extension um, that, that we've provided. So we actually have for one would be desktop, two would be mobile. Um, you, could have, you could have many of these. You could have desktop, mobile, um, we call it over the top TV, you know, whatever. You could have so many different ones. Um, in this case, we're just going to show the case where we have two. Um, and so we have one, we have a multivariate normal with this mean matrix and this covariance matrix. And then we have a different one for mobile. Um, we have our set of priors, um, which I think in the interest of time, I'm just going to put up here. And if you want to look more into it, you can. But the big thing to know on, on this slide is that basically the size of this is full. It's complete. It's J, uh, J by J. But in this one, it's J minus K. And we're missing. So we need to still estimate those K series in order to make this um, full, which are the full size, the same size as Y1. So how, how do we estimate those K? Um, so it's a simple idea. It goes back to, I think, even the first paper on synthetic control, um, which is basically to weight the non-missing data series to look like the missing using a quadratic optimizer. Um, there's a bunch of, well, there's a few theoretical things to, to be aware of, which is, you know, bias um, because you're not matching exactly. And are the donors, are they suitable donors um, for our, our test countries, our missing countries? Um, so we're going to say that we have enough um, donor countries. They, they have similar enough behavior. And then we're going to use correlation. So this is the second piece. Um, that is different in our model um, or extension of our model is using correlations um, rather than covariate balancing, though I think this model, you could also use covariate balancing. Um, we just haven't quite done that yet. So in the quadratic optimizer, um, we're actually going to do two pieces. We're going to do um, the transformation matrix is what we're going to um, get estimates for. Um, we don't need estimates for delta. Um, but we do need estimates uh, for kappa. So actually, delta is, is size t. And then you multiply delta size t by this j to get the full information. So because we have all the time points all, already across a bunch of countries except the k, um, we, we get this for free without doing an optimization over. Um, but for kappa, we need it because this is the country specific. So we're going to quadratically optimize um, a set of weights to get kappa and to get beta. So I've written that here. Um, so the two pieces, which is um, this is for kappa and this is for beta. Um, but really, the key piece here is to notice that you have nu, which is k um, for each of the missing ones. And so this is an extra set of weight um, that isn't necessarily optimized over, but it's placed into the optimizer such that the correlations are high. Um, for K and to the, to the donors. So there's a high correlation, which is estimated by a STAN. Um, so there's a joint estimation procedure going on here where STAN is estimating um, these correlations and then it's getting fed into the quadratic optimizer at the same time. Um, the weights obviously are going to say add up to one. So what does that look like? Um, unfortunately, I can't give the, the full data uh, or, or the full code because, um, because of copyright and, and whatnot. But um, I can give an example. There's, there's a few pieces left out. Um, the factor piece is left out um, down here, which if you want more about the factor uh, piece, you can look at, I think, Rick, Rick Fooney, um, Ferroni, I forget, I'm sorry, um, but him on the stand form, or you can message me on the stand form, um, and I can get you basically set up with that. Um, but I think the key thing here is that we're putting in a few pieces to the quadratic optimizer. Um, and, and we have multivariate priors for 
for the model, which you can read about in the STAM manual, uh, multivariate priors for multivariate models. Um, and then we have this uh, Cholesky factor core. Um, it would be size, it would actually have a size two here, two, two by J. Um, however, in this case, I'm just leaving it one. Um, so this is not the full, this is not the full code. Um, but the key here is to look at how we use the quadratic optimizer. Um, so the quadratic optimizer, I guess, full, um, full disclosure is not part of standard STAN. Um, the, I think it's a GPL license or, or something like that, which isn't going to be compatible um, with STAN's BSD license. So it's never going to get into STAN, at least this quadratic optimizer. Um, but if you want to use it, you can. Um, big shout out to Brock for helping out. Um, getting this in, um, go here if you want to install it, com command stand. So um, what's happening? I think the, the key things is this V weight, um, you'll see it, we use the L core um, and we, we get that V weight from the L core, which is estimated in the stand model. And then that is put in to G beta and G not beta. And then we solve the quadratic optimizer for a set of weights. So we get those weights out and we weight the betas um, by that, and then we can put it back into our model here. And so um, if you've ever seen the multivariate priors, this will look um, similar to you. Um, you'll see we have the Cholesky factorization of the multivariate normal, and then we get everything out. Oh. Um, if you're interested, we have a graphical model here. Um, the graphical model is, so a uh, big shout out to Tyler for, for putting all of this together. Um, but the graphical model will give you um, more information about how this is constructed. Um, for the interest of time, I'm just going to leave it up there. And if you want, you can look at it later. Um, how do we choose the number of latent factors? Um, so we're actually going to use VB with mean field. We're going to set the nits to 0.1, and then we're going to run over a bunch of a, a set of latent factors for each of the age, gender, um, site combinations, and then we're going to average over the root mean square error um, using holdout countries, and then we're going to choose the L, which minimizes that root mean square error, um, and that's basically how we choose that. Um, so what we did here is we held out um, we held out some countries and then this is this is our model fit for hold up, holding out countries so the model has no information about down here and so the true um, and when I say true what that means is that would be the well, the reported um, estimate for the unique visitors for this site age gender combination there is a, there is a standard error there. Um, which I wasn't able to get to put on here, um, but basically the next step is to add in the standard error and to see if our estimates are within the standard error of the reported value. Um, but in the case of, of this model, I think success criteria is going to be, does it trend well? Um, does, it, um, does it not overfit? Is it not producing basically um, very high variance estimates. Um, is it trending upwards? Is it trending downwards? Um, so there are a few pieces of basically business criteria about is this a, a suitable model that we can use? Um, in this case, it is trending uh, well. Um, you know, this is off, but I'm not too concerned about that. Um, this is looking good. Here's another one. Um, so you can see um, that you know, this kind of pops out. This is our desktop fit from the latent factor model. Um, it pops out there. Um, there. These are a thousand draws from that model. Um, so you can see how that's performing. Now here, you know, if we're trending correctly. We're a bit high at the end, but I'm okay with that as long as the trends are correct. Now, obviously if we were within the standard error, that would even be better. Um, and so that will be to be determined. Um, one of the things which, is great about this model um, that we've seen is that when the truth or the reported value actually is high variance, the model will often fit um, 
will fit almost like the average of that high variance. Um, so it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit the high variance. It doesn't fit these these peaks. Um, but it will fit what basically considers like almost the average um, of that. So now some of the real world applications are doing the mobile audience measurement. Um, we could do anomaly detection. We have partial website um, tags. So you can think of you have websites where we have tag information or we have unique visitor information for part of the website, but we're missing it for the other parts. Um, so this could be used to, to measure that. There's a provisional patent on the above. In the future, we might want to generalize this using global and local covariance matrices, um, putting everything into the model, such as age, gender, and their sites in a hierarchical structure. So instead of estimating each of these separately, um, that, you know, that may improve the fit, have more information there. And then also with country specific sites. So instead of having donor countries, you could just do it within a country and you could use other sites as donor sites for a country specific site. Again, thanks to, thanks to Rock for helping to get this in, you know, check out the solve quad, quad prog, um, branch on his, uh, on his Git, and you can, you can check that out. And here's the appendix if anyone is interested about how to get those standard errors we're, um, we're assuming normality here. So I hope, I, this was very quick, um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me um, on the stand forms or my email, spinkney at comscore.com. Appreciate it. Thank you.